Hello, this is Dr. Lauren Grossman presenting Chapter 22 of the Diabetes Canada 2018 Clinical Practice Guidelines on Complementary and Alternative Medicine for Diabetes. This chapter was written by myself, Robert Roscoe, and Anita Schack. Key changes from the last guidelines include an update of the latest literature on natural health products for diabetes and new information on complementary and alternative therapies, including yoga, traditional Chinese medicine, and manual therapies. In Canada, natural health products are defined as vitamins and minerals, herbal remedies, homeopathic medicines, traditional medicines such as traditional Chinese medicines, probiotics, and other products like amino acids and essential fatty acids. They are regulated under the Natural Health Products Regulations, which came into effect in 2004. Various natural health products have been studied to evaluate their impact on the development of both type 1 and type 2 diabetes, glycemic control in people with diabetes, and on the various complications of diabetes. Some natural health products have been shown to reduce the progression from impaired glucose tolerance to type 2 diabetes. A number of natural health products have been shown to lower A1C by at least 0.5% in randomized control trials lasting at least three months. These products are promising and merit consideration and further research, but as they are mostly single, small trials or meta-analyses of such, it is premature to recommend their widespread use. A few products, such as chromium, vitamin D, and vanadium have been the subjects of special interest in diabetes. Current evidence for these products is either conflicting, not supportive, or lacking. It is important to also consider potential harm from the use of natural health products. A number of studies of natural health products report significant adverse events. Some natural health products contain pharmaceutical ingredients and or properties and drug-herb interactions may also occur. A number of complementary and alternative approaches have been studied to some degree for diabetes and its complications, with limited supportive evidence, including yoga, traditional Chinese medicine, and reflexology. Other modalities such as chiropractic or osteopathic manipulation, homeopathy, shiatsu, registered massage therapy, or craniosacral therapy do not have studies specific to diabetes. Recommendations. One, healthcare providers should ask about the use of complementary and alternative medicine in people with diabetes, grade D consensus. Two, there is insufficient evidence to make a recommendation regarding efficacy and safety of complementary or alternative medicine for individuals with diabetes grade D consensus. Key messages. 25 to 57% of people with diabetes report using complementary or alternative medicine. Some natural health products have shown a lowering of A1C by at least 0.5% in trials lasting three months in adults with type 2 diabetes but most are single small trials that require further large-scale evaluations before they can be recommended for widespread use in diabetes. A few more commonly used natural health products for diabetes have been studied in larger randomized control trials and or meta-analyses refuting the popular belief of benefit of these compounds. Healthcare providers should always ask about the use of complementary and alternative medicine as some may result in unexpected side effects and or interactions with traditional pharmacotherapies. Key messages for people with diabetes. Many people with diabetes use complementary medicine, meaning along with, or alternative medicine, meaning instead of, with conventional medications for diabetes. Although some of these therapies may have the potential to be effective, they have not been sufficiently studied and others can be ineffective or even harmful. 
it is important to let your health care providers know if you are using complementary and or alternative medicine for your diabetes.